Sunday morning contributor Alina Cho is in conversation with a man who can rightfully take credit for giving millions of us a shot in the arm. So this is really ground zero for data and research, right? Yes. This we met Dr. Albert Borla, chairman and CEO of pharmaceutical giant Pfizer, at the company's labs in New York. Come here, for example. This is a cell culture lab. Inside these rooms, scientists are working on the next generation of COVID vaccines, testing vaccinated and unvaccinated cell samples against new variants. These are the same labs where they helped pioneer the original vaccine. And we begin with breaking news on the coronavirus. Think back to two years ago as COVID-19 spread across the world. The normal timeline for the development of a vaccine before this one was eight to 10 years. You went to your team and you said, get one in eight months. Mm -hmm. Did you honestly believe you could get it done? I felt that uh, we don't have option to fail. Good news. We made it. And it was just eight months later when Pfizer executives, partnering with BioNTech, were celebrating promising vaccine results. The efficacy was more than 90 percent. And a month after that, when the first shots were given, at the same time, Moderna, Johnson & Johnson, and other companies were making their own vaccines. So this is the home office? This is the home office, yes. You spent a lot of time in here. I spent most of the time here until during the pandemic. From his desk at home, Borla helped steer vaccine shipments around the globe. This is where you took a lot of your calls, right? A lot, yes. From a lot of world leaders. That's true. Like who called you? Everybody. Everybody. Yes. There was one world leader who thought the vaccine didn't come soon enough. Pfizer's vaccine results were made public on November 9, 2020 six days after Election Day and President Donald Trump's re-election loss. He made very clear to the world that he wanted the vaccine to come before the elections. Eventually the vaccine came after the elections. I think that is what frustrated him. He didn't call to thank me or congratulate me, but also he didn't call to complain. He just didn't call. That, of course, was only one chapter in the politicization of the pandemic. If my body, my choice, your body, your choice. Vaccine hesitancy remains high. Fewer than one third of all Americans are fully vaccinated and boosted, well behind many other wealthy countries. Borla has a new book discussing the challenges. You write in the book, what if we had accomplished these breakthroughs only to discover that the public would refuse the shot for lack of trust in the industry, the company, or the science itself? So in some ways, do you think that's what happened? I think that to a very, uh, to a very high degree it happened. Doesn't that upset you personally? You worked so hard on getting this vaccine to market safely. It doesn't upset you? It doesn't upset me. What uh, makes me feel is very sad, beyond sad, because I know the consequences of the way that these people are thinking, and uh, a lot of them are suffering these consequences, and they are dying. Politics have become personal for Borla. He's been the target of death threats, and at one point, a fake report surfaced online that he had forced his wife to get the vaccine, and it had actually killed her. The first thing that I thought, I need to call my kids, I need to call her parents to make sure that they don't read it before I tell them that your daughter or your mom is, is still alive. I was very, very upset. Borla has said he considers vaccine equity a high priority, making sure everyone globally has equal access to shots. Pfizer charged a full price to wealthy nations, but sold at cost to poorer countries. Yet vaccine equity seems far off. Amnesty International says that only 4% of those living in low-income countries are fully vaccinated. Yeah. That's terrible. That's, that's terrible. And uh, I, I think that uh, we could have done better by having vaccination centers there and particularly by convincing people of these countries that they should get the vaccine. Albert Borla believes yearly COVID vaccine shots are in our future just like flu shots, and a vaccine for the six-month to five-year-old set could be approved in the next few months. 
After two years of the pandemic, Borla is optimistic that a brighter future might be finally around the corner. Do you envision a world in which we'll be able to take our masks off for good? Oh yes, I think so. And I think that will be this year. That's very good news. <laughs> take the vaccines and we should be able to live our lives. Mm, that is music to my ears.